Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology. In this session on economic geography, we are going to learn about a very interesting concept called the special economic zones and also at the end about technology parks. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's understand the concept of these special economic zones. Now economic zones are where goods and services are produced and consumed but what is this special about it? So a special economic zone if you observe it's a specific area, it's a specific geographical location very importantly because it's economic geography in which the business and trade laws are different from outside these zones. It means these zones are special in provisions in terms of business and trade laws in a given country. It is located within a country's national borders itself, but the ambition is different. The aim here is to include the increasing trade balance, improve the employment opportunities, increase the investment opportunities, job creation as we know, and effective administration. These are the things to be considered while we are learning about the special economic zones. Now, now observe one very important point that what is the standard definition at world level. So you'll not find a very standard definition at world level because it varies in context. SEZ is determined individually by each country. But still we have a standard definition given by World Bank in 2008. So let's look into this standard definition. The modern day special economic zone typically includes what? Geographically limited area. That is the first thing. It's a geographically limited area. It means it's a given area, a piece of land which is clear cut, determined, physically secured. Now it should be fenced from outside, right? It should be clearly fenced. Then single management or administration should be there. It means it has to have a single centered management. That's very important. And then further eligibility for benefits based upon physical location within the zone, separate customs area, which is duty free benefit and streamlined procedures. It means all these benefits, custom free area, apart from that, the specific physical location and also the resources in this particular boundary that we say is restricted to this particular zone. That's important to understand, right? So this is what the World Bank says. Now let's look into the worldwide concept at world scale first. So worldwide, the first known instance of a SEZ seems to have been taken at industrial park set up in Puerto Rico in 1947 itself, right? So that was very early times just after the World War II where investment was sought after from US mainland in Puerto Rico. So to gain more and more investment, this was done. Then what we observe, the modernity comes in with science and technology as it develops in late 50s. So the first of its kind of the modern SCG that we say comes in Shannon Airport in Clare, Ireland. If you observe this image, this is from Ireland. So this was first of its kind, as we say, the modern SCG with modern equipments and amenities. So in late 1960s, many other countries like Taiwan also followed the suit. So in 1980s, you have China where you see lots of SEZs being made and especially the largest SEZ is the metropolis of Shenzhen. So this is what is important in terms of world phenomena in terms of historical development since 1947 onwards. Then what we see is from 1965 onwards in India also the export processing zones were created especially if you remember in Gujarat it's Kandla port. There it was created for the first time in 1965 and since then in India also it started evolving. So now look into this world map first and understand this distribution on world map. That's where spatial economic zones in economic geography matters. If you work it on a world map, if you know what is happening, what is the pattern, the spatial pattern of these spatial economic zones. So if you observe continent wise in North American continent, what you observe in United States, you have a dark color. Observe here. It means more than 900 SEZ, right? Then further this portion where you have Alaska, there also it's SEZ. But apart from that, this entire area does not have SEZ. It's devoid of SEZ, right? In South America also, you don't have too much, but yeah, very few SEZs in terms of the scale if you observe, right? But where do you see the most densely populated SEZs in the world? Located SEZs in the world? 
It's more into Europe and Asia and Indo-Pacific region. That's why we say that this area is the economic pivot of the world because it contains all the SEZs, the most of the SEZs and everything virtually from a pen to a needle to a television to a helicopter is produced in this particular zone. Right from this part of Europe to this northern portion and to this South Asia and Southeast Asia. Right. So this is where it's all located. Now you can pause the video here and in details, you can also observe on this map that what is the spatial pattern. So this spatial pattern will give you a lot of things in just a gist in a totality. So observe the sub-Saharan areas, observe the Indian Ocean areas, observe this Central America and Mexico area and the other regions. So you can have a picture in your head clear of where special economic zones are located for that matter. Now, some important points to remember here, some of the objectives of making these SEZs. What are the major objectives behind it? So the objectives are generation of additional economic activity than already existing in a country. That's important. Then we have promotion of export of goods and services. Very important in today's world. Then promotion of investment from domestic and foreign sources both. So if there is a given area where you say it's a duty free area, custom free area where you will not be levied extra charges for example you'll be giving government subsidies on electricity and so many other things on land then people will invest in that area that's the whole idea then creation of employment opportunities definitely if investment is coming with alongside it will create lots of employment opportunity for that area and development of infrastructural facilities alongside it right so to create a SEZ Overall development of a region is also involved. So what people say that if there is a SEZ created, it will lead to the overall development in a given region because its main purpose is to enhance investment, increase exports, create jobs and promote regional development in one line you can remember. That's the major objective. Then what kind of goods are produced in these SEZs? Very important. Remember the goods are export oriented in most of the cases. Export oriented means it has to go out of the country, out of the region to other areas. So market is not located alongside SEZs in a general fashion. It means vast majorities of developing world are creating more of SEZs. Why? Because they are garnering foreign exchange money from here. Right? You'll find lots of SEZs in South Asia, Southeast Asia, especially the poor countries, developing countries, because that helps in getting the foreign exchange here, right, from the developed countries. So some of the goods that you observe, advertising and film, alcoholic beverages, automobiles, cigarettes, cig tobacco, defense and strategic industries are there, drugs and pharmaceuticals, information technology, and not just these. There are others as well. Manufacturing hubs in SEZs, you know, most of the things in terms of manufacturing when it comes to the electronic items and several others, we know China is leading in the world, right? Petrochemicals and petroleum products, ports and harbors, roads, highways, and mass rapid transit system is part of it. Then satellite system, telecommunication system, all these things are linked to SEZ in different portions of the world that we saw on the map, right? Then let's categorize the SEZs into the functional category. So there are how many categories? Five functional categories. Now five functional category is one is free trade zones, FTZ. Then you have free zones called FZ, industrial parks or industrial states, IE, free economic zones and urban enterprise zones. Just few points, one by one, we'll discuss about each of them. So free trade zones is also known as export processing zone, as we gave example of Kandla port in India, right? So these are the export processing zones and it is an area with goods, specially landed, handled and manufactured specially to be exported, right? So it's export oriented. Then comes free port or free zones. These are common free port areas where you have special custom areas or small customs territory, which generally less restrict custom regulations. So it's kind of a liberal policy of customs in a given zone. And it's very important for the international trade. So you remember many international airports have these free ports where you have these custom areas or custom zones or international zones as they say, right? Then industrial parks or industrial estates. Right. That's where you remember the technology parks are also 
established right so in the end of this lecture we'll be talking about technology parks also so this is an area zoned and planned for the purpose of industrial development specifically right so it can be thought of as more as lightweight version of a business park or an office park right basic idea is here that industrial goods are produced and in a way where it can be exported to the outside that's the whole idea so example if you want to take the industrial estates located along river thames so thames gateway area of london is very famous for this right then comes the free economic zone right f e z so free economic zones the word itself says free zones refer to designated areas which companies are taxed very lightly it means taxation is very less or not at all in order to encourage the economic activity these are called free ports remember in the vipava valley nearby we learned about the caste topography in physical geography is the same tristi bay so the free port of tristi in italy is very famous for this free zone as an example from mediterranean then comes the last one that is urban enterprise zones uez so it is an area which policies to encourage economic growth that is the most important point as usual an urban enterprise zone policies generally offer tax concession infrastructure incentive and most importantly reduced regulation to attract investment especially the private companies so urban enterprise the word itself is it is enterprising and it is urban area and that's why more investment is going to come in that area right now let's look into the picture of india apart from the world examples and picture in india special economic zones it's very interesting to note that india was one of the first in asia today you see the map of asia it's full of scs but india was one of the first to recognize effectiveness of this export processing zone epz and remember kandla in 1965 we started so you remember scz in india were announced in 2000 and finally came to the table in 2005 and the rules were set up in 2006 and a recent amendment in 2019 has been done in the same right so almost a 20 years of the modern scz policies experience we have so we have 15 scz's including eight export processing zone and examples are kandla surat mumbai kochi noida chennai visakhapatnam indore jaipur jodhpur and several others as you observe right so this is one important point to note here that it's like a one stop clearance it means what single window clearance one stop clearance when we hear what should we know it's basically that you don't have to go to several other ministries and several other departments in order to create this scs or apply for it rather there is a single window single counter thing being created so it's called one stop clearance system approving the mechanism through the states that's very important right so if you observe many export processing zones have been converted to special economic zones in india and look at the years 65 75 86 to 1998 and till today now so kandla you see then noida madras cochin surat all these visakhapatnam you already know these places on the indian map right so now let's look into the one important aspect of indian special economic zone policy which has very specific features so first feature is that the zones are proposed to set up by private sector or by state government in association with the private sector so it's like a public private partnership mechanism that is being followed right then state governments have a lead role in this setting of scz so it's more of state governments desire to create scz in their states that's very important and a framework is being developed by creating special windows under existing rules to actually facilitate more and more creation of these scs as we know right so let's look into the map of india and which are the top 5 states in terms of scz remember gujarat with 90 in operational and furthermore you have a 28 approved andhra pradesh 19 operational 31 approved maharashtra 29 operational 56 approved karnataka 29 operational and approved is 62 right tamil nadu is again 36 and 50 so what you observe in this map is these five states are the leading states in india with scs right and the incentives for developers of these scs include what exemption from the duties income tax exemption almost 10 to 15 years exemption from service taxes fdi to develop townships in the given area and when townships develop the overall development comes with residential educational healthcare recreation facilities so overall development is what we see the feature in india 
right and now let's look into the minimum contiguous area because it's a geographical area an entity how much hectare of land is required for what activity for multi product almost thousand or more sector specific for example a port or airport hundred or more hectares and then for example software IT jewelry biotechnology and several others 10 or more hectare and free trade and warehousing you require 40 or more so this is how much land is allocated and state has to ensure that this much land is allocated as a special economy economic zone then only it can be created and facilitated so the end part of today's session is the technology park alongside these special economic zones so what is a technology park the word itself is technology so technology park is defined as being a property based development now remember this is a given land a given property where it is basically aiming to foster or accommodate what the growth of the tenant firms for example, if I'm a private company, I'll go there and create my own infrastructure and the land and everything will be given to me by the owner, by the government, right? So that's very important here to understand that a government or a private research body, it is for the facilitation of that. So it's all based on proximity, ownership and governance. Now remember, the principle of technology park is three principles. One is the nearness right so how near is it to the market or to the institution where more of research and development activity can be done and also ownership who owns the land it is it a government owned land or a private owned land and how that can be acquired what is that land pooling model and what kind of governance is there what kind of facility from the government is there is it a safe secure zone is it a tax free zone all those things are important now the purpose of technology park is a little different from special economy zone what is the purpose here the purpose is knowledge sharing right so agglomeration of different people coming to a table and talking about businesses about development about research that's the main important thing in technology park which you need to understand right so basically bringing the knowledge to commercial production is the theme here so remember it is contributing to national economic development and stimulating the formation of high technological firms and also at the same time creating employment opportunities attracting investment but the prime focus is not business prime focus is knowledge partnership that's very important to consider. So the world's first university research park was at Stanford Research Park started in 1950s, right? Then what you see is Research Triangle Park in North Carolina. Then in 1969, you have in France and further this knowledge economy is growing and world has more and more of these technology parks. Now look into India's map. How many technology parks do you observe here? Software technology parks especially and several other technology parks as well. So right from the top Srinagar to Mohali to Noida, Jaipur, also Kanpur which is missing on this map, Indore, Gandhinagar, Mumbai, Pune, Bhuvaneshwar, Kolkata, right, Guwahati, then you have Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai, Mysore, Tiruvananthapuram. All these places are the hub including Vishakhapatnam that we have on the map. So these are the technology parks and remember there are several other world examples that you can note from here which is given here from different portions of the world so you can pause the video here and you can learn about the world list here and also do this mapping alongside the list that would help you in writing good answers so where are these technology parks located so technology parks basically aim to do what to bring together people knowledgeable people who assist the developers of technology to bring their work to a commercial fruitation it means that knowledge people technology people don't know the business so let's the business people and technology people meet together and create a good world of economy around that so technology parks are the places which facilitate bringing together of these two kinds of people one is the developers of technology and the other is the entrepreneurs alongside it so that is important in technology park so now when we have learned in details the concept of special economic zones also its function in world as well as in india and also at the end when we learned about the technology parks in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on different other aspects of economic geography so stay tuned stay safe keep learning